Lady Miko is a widely renowned kitsune yokai in Inazuma, so it's natural for young yokai like myself to approach her with reverence. But contrary to my expectations, she was surprisingly amiable. She even came to visit me in person and taught me lots of useful stuff about how to survive in human society. Things like proper human etiquette, ways to approach people, and different fried tofu recipes. Huh? That last one was just for her? Parcels sent to Tenchukaku are all packaged intricately with multiple layers of wrapping. Maybe that's what they call a package fit for the almighty Shogun. <laughs> oh, some of them smell really good. I wonder what's inside. I crossed paths with that detective a long while back. Once he learned that I was a Nekomata, he started asking me to investigate the whereabouts of missing cats. I was happy to help at first, but then I'd hear the cats say things like, I just want to see the outside world, or I get so bored when I'm at home, I felt bad for them. So I lied, telling him that I hadn't seen any cat at all. But it seemed like he could see right through me. I've always wanted to have a chat with the Lady Tengu. Maybe it's because she's the general of the Tenryo Commission, but I find her quite intimidating, so I've only ever watched her from afar. I... I'm just curious about her wings, you know? Are they ever an inconvenience? How does she deal with shedding feathers? Hmm... Speaking of the feathers, I think lining my box with them would be super comfy! He's an Oni, but he gets along with humans perfectly! He even has his own gang! Oh, I'm so jealous. Maybe I should go ask him for some advice. So I met this magician in Fontaine who could make anything disappear, then make it reappear out of thin air! He must have used some kind of yokai power to make that happen, right? Hmm... Is he a yokai too, then? She's really nice to me! I often ran into her in the past when she was out researching ways to make fabrics and develop color palettes. She was always worried that I'd leave claw marks all over her beautiful textiles. But come on, why would I do that to her? She's running a store in Fontaine now and sometimes asks me to deliver stuff to her. <laughs> she even helped me tailor the clothes I'm wearing now. You travel far and wide and I deliver packages all across the world. That makes us similar, don't you think? But although we both travel from one place to the next, my travel expenses are covered, while you have to pay for everything out of pocket. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. I didn't mean to brag. I've met all sorts of people through delivery work. Some have become regulars of Komania Express, while others have become my friends. And I feel so lucky for that. Each delivery ends with the package reaching its destination. But our bonds with each other live on. If you ask me, friendships between yokai and humans aren't all that difficult to form. I still remember the first time I tried shapeshifting into human form using my yokai powers, thrilled at the thought of finally being able to experience the human world for myself. And before I knew it, my vision had appeared at my waist. Hmm, did this god have a profound desire to travel to all sorts of places too? <laughs>